Today, we're going to look at Service Stack running on .NET 6, the changes to Service Stack templates using C Sharp 10, an updated hosting model, and a quick example of upgrading a Service Stack application. .NET 6 brings a new long-term support, or LTS, release to .NET. This gives developers on both .NET 3.1 and .NET 5 an upgrade path for extended support out to the end of 2024. It also brings a large array of features including significant performance improvements, c 10 language support, hot reloading, and a new web app hosting model, just to name a few. If you have a service stack project sitting on .NET 3.1 or .NET 5, the update path should be a smooth one, with the main steps being the updating of your service stack dependencies to the latest of 5.13.2 and targeting .NET 6 for your projects. To take advantage of some of the new features in .NET 6, Service Stack has a new modular startup which better aligns with .NET 6 and the use of the assembly hosting startup pattern and the web application builder. This has been reflected in our project and mix templates where you will notice the use of assembly hosting startup at the top of each configure class file. This approach encapsulates the functionality you want configured in a standard .NET way and does so without requiring assembly scanning. Here we can see the use of MongoDB without any use of Service Stack, but since Service Stack can read the standard .NET IOC container, this mixes seamlessly into your Service Stack app host and services, resolving dependencies as expected. When required, these hosting startup classes can configure the app host directly using the new configure app host extension method for the iWebhost builder. This enables isolated service stack configuration for a required feature while using standard .NET 6 patterns and control for consistency. This new modular startup is optional, so it is not required to be migrated when upgrading your service stack application. However, if you want to take advantage of the new .NET 6 top level statements and keep your existing modular startup code, you will have to make a small change to support this. Let's do a quick walkthrough of upgrading a .NET 5 application to see a concrete example of the different upgrading steps, including migration to the new hosting startup pattern. Here we have the Chinook database exposed by a service stack application using .NET 5. The easiest way to update is to first upgrade all of your service stack dependencies to 5.13.2 or higher. This can be done using your IDE built in support for NuGet or by editing your csproj files directly. Once that is completed, let's retarget our projects from .NET 5 to .NET 6. Clean and rebuild your application and it now runs locally. For most applications, this will be the whole upgrade process. However, while Service Stack tries to avoid any breaking changes between versions as much as possible, be sure to check our release notes in our documentation for additional migration advice for any breaking changes. Next, we are going to update this application to take advantage of the .NET 6 top level statements for the entry point of the application. This replaces the existing void main entry point in the program.cs file so we can get rid of some boilerplate code. Once this small refactor is complete, we can then look at removing the startup class. To do this, we will first switch from the host builder to a web application builder. And since we want to keep our existing modular startup classes for now, we will need to use the services.addModularStartup pointing to our app host type and passing in our I configuration from our builder. Now we can pull the existing logic from our startup class configure method straight into our top level statements and fixing the environment reference from our app. From 5.13 onwards, the Netcore app settings also auto resolves the I configuration from our builder, so this can be simplified as well. Now we have our Chinook application running on .NET 6 using top level statements with our existing modular startup classes configuring our database connection and auto query. Lastly, we want to migrate our modular startup to use .NET 6 hosting startup for both DB and auto query configuration, as well as letting the app host initialize itself so there is less code in our program.cs file. The iHosting startup implementation replaces the previously used iConfigure services and iConfigure app host interfaces, and instead extension methods of the builder can be used to replace their implementation. So the three common steps to migrate each previous modular startup class is one, add the hosting startup assembly call at the top of your file. 
to replace the iConfigure services and or iConfigure app host interfaces with the iHosting startup interface. And three, move the implementation of each into a new action registered against the builder in the new configure iWebhost builder method. Do this process for each of the existing modular startup classes and once complete, you will have migrated to the new .NET 6 modular startup making your other .NET 6 components start up in the same consistent way. Upgrading to the latest .NET version isn't always something that can be done straight away, and if for whatever reason you still need to use the older .NET 5 project templates for supporting your work, the easiest way is to use the Service Stack website's Getting Started page and selecting .NET 5 before selecting the template you need. To not leave any developers behind, we also have template options for the .NET Framework and ASP.NET Core with the .NET Framework. The same can be done from the .NET X tool by providing the full template archive URL in place of the template name. Even for older projects, since .NET 6 is the latest LTS release, we hope most developers will be looking to update to take advantage of the performance, features and continued security updates. ServiceStack maintains a set of stable APIs to make this process as simple as possible to help you keep your project up to date. While every project can have its own complexity, ServiceStack has a strong track record of maintaining compatible APIs and supporting customers to get the most out of their software development efforts by making the process of staying up to date as easy as possible. Like with any ServiceStack upgrade, breaking changes are minimal to none, with the only one in the latest release impacting users of the ORM Lite Update Only API method. If you are using the Update Only method, you might need to change some instances to use the new Update Only Fields method. Examples of the change are in the latest release notes which are linked in the description. If you are upgrading to .NET 6 and having some issues, please reach out to us on the customer support forums and we'd be happy to help you out. That's it for this video, I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching.